morning, the first reading is from Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. For those of you who have brought your Bible, please follow along. For those like me, I have to see the page number, and it's 532. <laughs> or you can watch the screen, let that drift into your mind, and down to your subconsciousness, into your soul, and into your heart. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong. Thou hast commanded thy precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping thy statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame. Having my eyes fixed on all thy commandments, I will praise thee with an upright heart when I learn thy righteous ordinances. I will observe thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. We continue with the Sermon of Mount this morning. We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5, first verses 1 and 2. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, and now we skip to verses 21 to 26 in chapter 5. Jesus continues to speak. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. And finally, from Matthew chapter 7, verses 28 and 29, now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded by his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words this morning. We continue today, as we have been for the past couple of weeks, discussing the Sermon on, on the Mount as told by the Gospel of Matthew. Last week, if you remember, we heard Jesus say that he is not going to get rid of any of the laws, but that he is going to fulfill the laws. And we read in verse 20 where Jesus says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so here we are once again this morning, sitting with Jesus upon that mountain, surrounded by others, intent on hearing every word that comes out of his mouth on the edge of our seats, waiting. And Jesus speaks. And what comes out of his mouth is what he told us. He is not going to abolish the laws of the past but he is going to expound upon them to get down to maybe those finer points that we might have missed by looking at only the letter of the law, looking at only what the words written on the law were saying and not looking at the meaning behind the law, what I called last week the heart of the Torah. And this morning is the first of six, what scholars have come to call the antitheses. And they are called that because of how Jesus begins each section. 
For he opens each and every section by saying, you have heard it said. But what I say to you, these are the words to begin each new teaching point Jesus is wanting to get across to us. Each one delivers what Jesus talked to us about last week. To look at the laws and the prophets and to go deeper into what is being asked of us. Essentially telling us, you know how it was. Now this is how it is going to be. Don't forget what was said then. Add to it what I am saying now. And we will cover all of these antitheses. Next week we will go over three, the week after that two. But today we are going to talk about one, the first one, anger. And Jesus starts us off by saying, you have heard it said, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Now, everyone catch that? Everyone a little nervous? Everyone a little angry? Because I'll, I'll agree, I read it and I myself got a little, got a little worried. Because I myself have been angry, especially at my brother. And if you don't believe me, you can ask my parents. And if you don't believe I'm angry, you can ask some of the youth. They have stories. But what is going on is Jesus is telling us that not to get rid of the emotion of the anger. But how we deal with the anger itself. This week, as I was writing this sermon, I got angry. I was in the middle of writing and my computer just crashed. <laughs> and as I'm screaming at my computer, hoping that nothing was lost, I realized I felt a little bit better. <laughs> But I also understood that I could not just hold it in. Because if I would have sat there and been completely angry for the rest of the time, this sermon would have turned out a whole lot different. And we might have missed the point of what Jesus was trying to tell us in our scriptures. But I'll tell you right now, my computer and I, we are fine. We talked it out. <laughs> We've worked together to understand that without each other, both of us are pretty much useless. Because without my computer, I couldn't write or print out and give to you what I have on the pulpit this morning. And without me, my computer just sits there. And it's just a waste of money. So together we can work. Even though we're angry with each other at times, we can still work together. And this is what Jesus is trying to let us know. We all get angry. We all experience that emotion within our lives. Even Jesus, we have seen Jesus get angry. There are passages in Psalms where the psalmist is screaming to God over his anger. And that's not a problem. Because it's healthy. It gets that emotion out. What we can't allow is for that anger to stay within us, to build up, to fester then it is no different than murder. And it is what we will be judged for. Because it is the anger that can divide us. It is the anger that can send us against one another. It can destroy everything that we are trying to accomplish. And it doesn't matter whether it's your anger or whether it's someone else's anger that you've just attached yourself to. Anger destroys. 
in the scripture, it talks about brothers and sisters. That we should not be angry with our brothers and our sisters. It doesn't discriminate. And since we are all children created by God, all humanity created in the image of God, and since God is the parent, the father, and the mother, depending on the scripture, then we have no need to continue to hold on to anger with anyone. For when we are angry, we are liable to judgment. We are liable to go in front of the council. We are liable to the hell of fire. This is not for anyone else. This speaks directly to us. It is our responsibility to make sure that our grudges, our prejudices do not divide the country in which, do not divide the communities in which we are a part of. Jesus says that being angry with our brothers and sisters, insulting them, calling them names is what can eventually lead to the murder, literal and figurative. Because if we do not let go of these feelings against one another, if we let them build up in our minds and our hearts, eventually there is no place for this anger to go except outwardly against our brothers and our sisters, whether it's physical, emotional, or verbal. It has to go somewhere. In either case, it will begin to erode this community that we have tried so hard to establish. It will begin to erode the community of faith. It can erode a local community, a national community, the world community. Anger has the way of breaking down bonds and creating division. Now, I would like to look at a hypothetical moment for a minute. And I want you to understand, this is a hypothetical situation. Picture a church. Two people in this church disagree with one another because, let's face it, it's a church and that happens. But they do not go to one another to talk. They do not go to each other to express their anger, but instead they go to other people. Telling those confidence about their perceived slight from the other. And of course, as these things go, the other people start to tell more. And then the more start to tell more. Eventually, it begins to grow, and it begins to divide, and the church separates. In one group, there's so much animosity built up. One group just leaves. They can't even be in the same building, and the community is torn apart. All that was built for however many years that church has been together, destroyed, because two people could not come together and talk. Two people allowed their anger to erode everything else that was going on in the church. Everything else that that community had done, anger took away. Because perhaps each of each person was waiting for the other one to apologize first. Because in their mind, it was the other one's fault. Jesus is telling us that the responsibility to this problem lies with us. The responsibility to heal anger is with us. We should not wait for someone else to come to us and try to relieve this anger. We should go to them. And we should go to them first. We should do this before we even come to God's altar. 
before we come to give God all that we are and all that we have, our emotions, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, first we have to do that to the people. We have to give all that we have to each other to help to create this community, to work on it, to continue to try to unite all our brothers and sisters, not being angry with one another, not insulting one another, and not calling them names, any name. We are to give up our anger against whoever we think has slighted us in the past. It was in a vision that God spoke to Peter. And in Acts 10, verse 15, we read this. What God has made clean, you must not call profane. All that God has made clean is not up to us to call any different. For we are the ones who are going to be judged. We are not the ones who should be doing the judging. We are here to repair this world, not to divide. We are here to reconcile with all of our brothers and sisters, trying to bring communities together trying to follow the heart of the Torah, to follow the heart of the Gospels, trying each and every day to love, to accept, to forgive, and to build one community united all together in God. Amen.